Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. It's uh, coming up on the middle of April and it's still snowing here. But uh, nevertheless, I'm still working on this mill project. It uh, is very time consuming, setting one of these up. I haven't even really gotten to the setting up part. I uh, thought so I'd go over Brian's millwright tips that I've learned on this project. Uh, if you build anchor boxes like what I used on this mill, uh, make the bottom of them twice the thickness of the nut and then weld them shut so that they can't uh, drop or move on you or anything. And then you don't have to worry about the nuts falling out or the studs dropping down or anything else. Also, if you're uh, using studs, uh, all three of them may not be too bad and just make them long and then you can chop them off to length when you're done instead of having to uh, fuss with uh, getting them just exactly right to screw into the nuts. Uh, I spent a, essentially an entire day putting these feet in here and getting all the nuts on them, getting them all fished up and uh, screwed to where I had the correct amount of uh, stud through the nut because it can't stick up too high or they hit the floor that goes across and you don't want them too low because you want good uh, coverage of your threads through the nuts. So that's why I think it'd be a good idea to just make it uh, more of a fixed length than what I did here. I just went off the foundation diagram and that's a tip that they didn't give on there but that's my tip to you all in case anybody does a project like this. Now you'll know, no more than twice the nut width in the box. Other than that, another day was spent leveling on this mill here. So, I've actually got it cleaned off since it's snowing outside. We're well below the dew point. And I thought I'd show you what I've got going on here before I bring it, uh, before I cover all this back up with uh, fluid film to keep it from rusting because I'm sure it's going to warm up this week and everything in here is going to sweat and be wet and it's going to just rust over like nobody's business if I don't cover it up. So while it's clean, let's take a look. First off, let's talk about this evil level. Uh, Stans and Kowski was right. You got to take the backlash out of your level before you use it. No, it's not really the truth. This vial is dorked on this thing. A lot of people seem to think that maybe I don't know how to use a precision level or maybe I've never used one before in my life and I don't know how they work. But the uh, truth is I'm fairly experienced with these and kind of know what to look for. And the vial is not loose in this. And I took it apart and can see no possible way to put anything in it. Uh, it's a sealed tube. There's no... Uh, screw or nothing you can take out to top up the fluid level so that's not happening either but an observant viewer thought that it was cracked and I looked closer at it and there's it's not cracked but there's a heavy scratch line in the top of the vial over here on this side and where that heavy scratch line is a bubble hang up in it so it's deformed the tube uh, I mean we're talking a about as sensitive of a level as you get in this style of a level with uh, three tenths per foot or five arc seconds. So this one is twice the sensitivity of my other precision level. So it doesn't take much, obviously, because just a little scratch it screwed this thing up. So what I've done in order to be able to use it is I have recalibrated the level and now level occurs between this line to the left and this line to the right. And when it's in between those two, that is now level. I did that by uh, getting my other level level and putting this level next to it and then adjusting it to where I got it to read where I wanted it when it was actually level. So it doesn't show level, but it is level, if you understand that. But anyway... That's the only way I could get this to work. I've ordered a replacement vial for it. Uh, who knows when I'll ever see it. And they, that was Tuesday, I think, and 
Uh, I called them Friday just to be sure they got the order, and they said that they did, but and they would send a uh, order acknowledgement, and that still hasn't happened. It's been three more days, but uh, who knows? Maybe it'll show up eventually. I can hope because it looks like it's the exact same vial as what's on here, so it should be just a matter of swapping it out when I get it. But for now, we'll use it like it is. So I'm gonna show you what I got going on, and uh, we'll double check everything on here. This is set for one day since I uh, fooled with any of the levels on it, and we'll see how it looks. See if it's uh, stable, I guess. Well, nobody should have to watch the boring. Uh, day struggle of leveling this mill so I'll just do this as a reference for myself and for anybody that's interested as you can see there looking at the level it's a half thou off that way so I've wrote that on the mill and I've gone down through here and gone over top of each bolt and wrote down how level it was as a reference and then we'll come back after we get the table on and see if it makes any difference. But anyway, so we got starting at the mill end. Now the mill is leveled so that there's no twist in the bed. Note that it's on the marks that I have calibrated the level to to be level. And I've gone all the way down through there and I've got no twist. And I don't have any of the bolts pulled down so I'm not forcing the mill in alignment. It's just sitting here. I could maybe improve this by yanking it down. But anyway, going down the side here, and I'm at, I'm over top of each bolt and in the center of each bolt. So we're zero, 0.5 towards the foot, one thou to the foot, one thou to the foot, zero, 0.5 the other way, so there's a hump right here. 0.5 to the head, 0.5 to the head, zero, zero, 0.5 to the foot. And this is the end where a tailstock should be. If I had the tailstock, maybe someday I'll find one to go on this mill. That I don't have to trade a kidney for. Let's look at the other side. So over here, starting at the head, got zero, 0.5 to the foot, 0.5 to the foot, zero, zero, 0.5 the other way. So there's a little hump here that matches the other hump. Uh, what that is is uh, this is where there's actually no this is where the wear starts in the mill and it drops off towards the head because this is where the table's been running so actually this is going to be the flat part and the reason it all slopes the other way is because it's actually running downhill so 0.5 0.5 0.5 to the head, 0, 0.5 to the foot, and 1 to the foot. I'm going to do one other test here. I'm going to take my precision straight edge, put it down on here, and I've got a thou and a half feeler gauge. It's the thinnest one I got. I'm going to go down through here and see if I can get it underneath of it anywhere. Uh, when I first started, I could get this under it, so we'll see how it does. Not there. Go anywhere there. 
Won't go anywhere there. Gauge won't go under it anywhere, so maybe that's a good sign. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but uh, I'm gonna try and turn the light out and shine a light under it to see what it shows. Yeah, not too bad. see any light coming under it so it's probably a pretty good sign so I don't know if anything shows up on camera I'll have to see later but that's the sweep so I don't know how good or bad that is I guess I'll have to get this table on here and see how those level measurements translate into how much the table's moving up and down as it goes in and out because I don't really know exactly how that'll relate it's how good or how bad this is those measurements are over uh, a one foot length this table's three foot wide so a lot of that's going to average out maybe obviously that hump's going to pick it up somewhere in the middle but uh, we'll just have to see how it does uh, I could probably get the hump out jacking the back end of it up but uh, if I do that then it's way high in the back so then or, well yeah then there's a big hump at the middle part where you move in and out instead of three foot out from the face so it's probably better to have it I think aligned at the head better than to have it aligned in the middle of the bed for most of the work that I'll be doing but I'll just have to see how it goes I can always change it if I don't like it so, hope you learned something and enjoyed this. Uh, it's certainly been a chore getting this far. There's a whole lot of leveling screws on this thing and it twists up like a noodle when you start cranking on it. So, every time you move someplace, it moves someplace else. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.